is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. Today's video is going to be about Octopus Intelligent Go and how to get those extra cheap rate energy slots and how I'm making use of it. So I've got an example here of a day where Octopus gave me some slots and then I actually encouraged the system to get some more because I thought I needed them to charge the home storage battery, not just the electric car. Um, so that uh, I wouldn't run out of cheap rate energy overnight. It's a really cold day, lots of heating energy being used. Would I run out of energy on the home storage battery? Would my Palum Tech batteries empty out during the night? Well, if I could have a boost of some extra cheap rate energy during the day, then I definitely wouldn't run out. So I went through that quandary, etc. So I wanted to talk you through the data and what I saw and, and those numbers. And I hope that makes sense then about when I'm choosing to gain some extra cheap rate slots, when that's helping me, and how wonderful it is that this Octopus solution is allowing this to happen. So first of all, let's explain cheap rate slots. I'm on the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff and peak rate is 31 pence a kilowatt hour. And uh, the cheap rate, the off peak is 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. 42 pence uh, a day standing charge. Now the cheap rate kicks in at uh, half past 11 at night and ends at half past five in the morning. And then it's peak rate for the rest of the day. Now this chart here shows slots, half hour slots. And those are the cheap rate slots, the lower ones. So when we're trying to gain extra cheap rate slots, what we're trying to do is replace some of those 31 pence bars that you can see on this chart between half past five in the morning and half past 11 at night, replace them with some cheaper, smaller bars of seven and a half pence. So we get more time in the tariff of that uh, very cheap rate of 7.5 pence. That's what we're trying to achieve. Just for completeness, it's also worth saying that I'm on an export tariff, the outgoing Octopus 12 month fixed. I'm being paid 15 pence a kilowatt hour even though I'm gaining these cheap rate slots of seven and a half pence. So yep, 15 pence when I'm exporting it, seven and a half pence when I'm importing it. So this is where it all started the other day, 8.45 in the morning. I was checking the system, having a look to see what battery we've got. And on my Home Assistant view, which this is what it is, it's Home Assistant, showing all sorts of data from my Victron inverter, from the Solar Edge inverter, from my energy. It's data coming from everywhere, all accumulated in one place in under Home Assistant. So I was seeing my battery has 79% charge. And I thought, well, that's not too bad but it would have been fully charged at 5.30 in the morning from charging overnight. So I've already used 21% by 8.45 in the morning. So that's heating boosting. And you can see that here. I've got uh, the battery is currently discharging 1.876 kilowatts. Uh, the AC load is 1.757 kilowatts. Uh, the air conditioning heating is actually consuming at the moment 1.129 kilowatts. So that's what's going on. Lots of heating because it's cold and that's drawing the battery down low. So I was considering charging the Mini and then gaining some extra cheap rate slots. But then I noticed the Mini was already at 100%. And I thought, I didn't charge it. It shouldn't have charged overnight. Why is it at 100%? So when I checked, it appears that I didn't put the Zappy into stop mode. I left it in Eco Plus and Octopus Energy decided... To charge it. So because I plugged it in into the afternoon, Octopus decided um, to give me some cheap rate slots from something like nine o'clock in the evening all the way through till midnight and it charged the mini and charged it to 100%. So I had two charging sessions with the mini that day between nine o'clock and 11 o'clock. That's what I expected. But then later in the evening, eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night, that I did not expect. So this is an example of Octopus giving me the cheap rate slots without me trying to encourage it, without me trying to manipulate the system or milk the system, whichever way you would like to think about it. But it's simply because I have um, a higher percentage set to say, add this much percent of the battery and do so by a particular time. So with 79% home storage battery left, lots of energy requirements required for heating. It's a cold day. No solar planned for the day either. It's dark grey clouds all day. Am I going to have enough energy to last on the battery 
or will I run out? I don't want to use peak rate expensive rates. So I'm now making the decision. Do I try to get some more cheap rate slots? Well, 79% um, and I've got to take into account 10% will be left um, to protect the battery. So I've actually only got 69% usable battery left. 69% of 14.4 kilowatt hours. That's my usable battery size. Gives me just a fraction under 10 kilowatt hours usable left. So I've got 10 kilowatt hours to last the day until 11.30 at night. Is that enough? Now, what I've done is looked at other days and looked at how much energy I've used on these sort of cold days by the end of the day. And it's pretty close. It looks like it's within one or two kilowatt hours. I might make it. I might not. But it's going to be close. It all depends on how much solar we actually get in the day. I guess, or how much heating we have. So if I compromise on heating or we get a bit of extra solar, I won't run out and we'll all be fine. But that worrying about it, being concerned about it, it's much easier just to add some more charge, get the battery a little bit fuller, and then we've got plenty of capacity and I'm not concerned about turning the heating off and I'm not concerned about whether the battery is going to run out. So that's what I do. I plug the Kia Soul in, and as you can see here, the Zappi starts charging at 1.876 kilowatts. As soon as I see the Zappi charging, I know Octopus have initiated that charge, so I must be on cheap rate energy now. So I swap the home storage battery in to keep the batteries charged mode. So on this chart, you can see it charging at 3,460 watts, 3.4 kilowatts. That's my maximum charging rate for my batteries. So I'm now going to increase the percentage that I have for the home storage battery whilst charging the car whilst also having all of the heating and all of the house energy coming straight from the grid at cheap rate. The good plus about that is because it's not coming from the battery, it's coming from the grid directly. I haven't got any conversion losses of storing the cheap rate energy into the battery, into DC, then converting it from DC into AC, back out again to run the house. So if I'm running directly from the grid, I'm actually making a 10 to 20% saving at the same time. So the more cheap rate slots we have, the cheaper it is for me and the less energy I'm actually using. 921, there's a little bit of solar, 327 watts, but I'm still charging the battery, 3.5 kilowatts now, and we're up to 76%. 10 o'clock, we're already up to 88%. If you look next to the battery percent, you can see the voltage, and when the voltage reaches 52.4, the home storage battery is actually full at 100%, which happens just a few minutes after I took this screenshot. As soon as I've got enough energy in the car and the home storage battery, I turn off the Zappi, which then stops me having the cheap rate energy. And because I'm now on peak rate energy, I want to be running on the battery. So I change the setting and start to use the battery instead of the grid. So going back to the beginning of this video, um, when I first noticed what was going on, I'd actually only used 18 kilowatt hours for this day. Now that I've had this extra boost and charged the car and charged the home storage battery, etc., I'm up to 28 kilowatt hours. I've used another 10 kilowatt hours cheap rate energy from Octopus Intelligent. And with 96% batteries remaining on my Pylon Tech batteries, I'm now confident, regardless of heating and however cold it is, I've got enough energy to last me through to half past 11. I haven't got to be concerned or even think about it. What's interesting to note here is that I've actually got some solar coming through, 2.1 kilowatts, but I've set the battery to limit charging to only 500 watts. So I'm going to export the rest. Part of that is because I'm being paid more for the export, but also it's because if I increase it higher, when clouds come over and the solar energy reduces, I'll get a little bit of grid draw because of the ramp up and ramp down times. So because while it's adjusting to the amount of solar that's coming through, there'll be a little bit of grid draw. And you can see that here, the battery charging at 2.7 kilowatts, but I've actually got some grid draw of 757 watts. That little burst of solar doesn't last long though, and we're soon drawing back from the battery. So this is now quarter past one, we're at 95%. Uh, at 5 to 4 in the afternoon, we're at 84% and still drawing from the battery. There's no solar at all, but the heating's reduced down nicely. The house is nice and warm. We're only 397 watts for the air conditioning system. 
So the more time that passes and the more heating we're using, the battery percent is going to keep reducing until the point that I actually turn the heating off. Now that comes at just before 8 o'clock in the evening, uh, we turn the heating off because the heat's got enough residual heat to last for the rest of the evening before we call it a night. So at this point, at uh, 20 past 8 in the evening, I've got 66% battery, that's 56% usable, and we've only got to last 3 hours until we get the next amount of cheap rate energy. But with hardly any grid drawer at just 100 and something watts, 200 watts, that's definitely going to last us. We're going to have more than 50% by the time we get to half 11 at night. In fact, at 11 o'clock at night, we still had 61%. So after all that effort, adding the extra slots, charging the car to gain some extra battery charging, I was left with 61%. If I hadn't of done all of that extra stuff to get those extra slots and the extra battery charging, we probably would have made it on this day. The stats for the day in total, we imported 28 kilowatt hours, we exported 1.4 kilowatt hours, solar generation was only 4.3 um, what else have we got on there? Heating hot water, 2.1 kilowatt hours. Charging the electric cars, just 2.5 kilowatt hours. We didn't have to do a lot of car charging to get the enough extra time slots to charge the home storage battery. So the issue here, I guess, is was it really worth doing? And it just gives peace of mind. If I was that close to running out, if we hadn't had some extra solar, we might have run out. So it's the what ifs and maybes. I just avoided some of that. Soon as we get to midnight, I start charging the home storage battery again. I don't do it at 11.30 at night. I wait until midnight so that we're starting to draw from the grid on a new day boundary. So the cycle starts again. By 20 to 3, we're basically full. The voltage is at 52.4 volts. It's going to click over from 96 to 100%, as you can see there. The heating's going to come on again at some time between 3 in the morning and 4.30 in the morning. And we'll start to draw from the grid for the heating to start with. But as soon as we get to 5.30 again in the morning, that's when the cheap rate energy stops and we'll start drawing from the battery. And then we're starting another day. Will the battery last? We've only drawn 12.9 kilowatt hours from the grid and at 7.42 in the morning we've got 89% of battery this morning, which actually looks more than it was previously. That's because I planned to not try to get any more cheap rate slots and I actually couldn't resist turning some of the heating off overnight and because I've done that I've got more battery because I've got more battery I should definitely last throughout the day so I don't need those extra cheap rate slots but coincidentally also I think there's actually going to be more solar this day as well so it's going to be a much easier day to manage and I don't need to try to get more slots. Hope that made sense. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope these stats um, help explain how I can use Octopus Intelligent to gain these extra cheap rate slots and how sometimes they just give them to me anyway. And sometimes I don't actually want them. And that's why I've got some automation set up to stop draining the battery when it decides to charge the car of its own accord. Anyway, this is what goes on with Octopus Intelligent. It can be quite complicated, but uh, if all this goes on in the background, you don't really have to know. It's only really complicated if you choose to make it complicated and try to interfere, as I'm doing here, with some uh, manual interventions, charging the car at different times a day, getting those extra cheap rate slots. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Take care. See you soon for more energy-related videos.